uh, today we're going to be talking about the hardship on the economy of the world, not only in Nigeria, and what is God's plan for you. The devil is trying to show a picture that is not of you or that is not of the economy. The devil has placed his agents all over the world to bring pain and agony to God's people. But I want to assure you that God has not forsaken you. He has you in his heart. Now, the Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18, Say, you shall remember your Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to get well. You know the person that has given you power. You know that no matter the arrows that come to you, you will succeed. So, I want us to work in up our spirit. Now is a tough time in our economy. It's a tough time in the world right now. Whereby we are buying our money with our money. As bad as it is. And we need to we, we need to strive to But let me tell you, you know, this this is what the Bible talk about. Say there will be darkness and there will be cross darkness, dark with people. But we, the Bible says we, we is a let we will survive and succeed. So success is our right in God. No matter how the economy weave. If I let them take dollar to two million naira, trust me, as a Christian, as a believer, as God's own, you will succeed. And how do you succeed? That is what we're going to be discussing about. What you need to do in this hard time of this economy. Let me tell you, there are a lot to do that will make that will exempt you from this economy. It's not your hard work. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. It's all about obedience to God's word. God has made provisions for us on how we can succeed in this kind of harsh economy. He knew this season before you and I was born. God knew how we overcome this temptation. He knew that this thing will come. This perilous time, the Bible said, will surely come. God knew that this time will come. But how do we succeed? He has also made provision for us on how we can succeed in this time this hard time of our economy. So I want to encourage you as a Christian first, don't give up, be happy, rejoice, because the word of God is true. God said, everyone and head will pass away, but not one jot of his word shall, shall go untouched. So everything God said about this economy is definitely going to come out what we are seeing right now. This season is ordained season. God knew this season before you and I was born. Before the world that this will come. Now, I, I, want to, I want to bring a picture of God's plan for this for us, how do we escape? What we need to do as a Christian. Now, in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 8, and we read from verse 20 to 22. Now, the Bible said, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, after the flood, after the flood, unto the Lord, and took off every clean beast and every clean fowl, and offered a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cause the head, the ground, anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smell, smart anyone, everything more, everything living as I have done. But he now said in verse 22, which is the cash in that, so, but why the head remains? Seed time and harvest time, cold and eat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not what cease. Praise God. Now the Bible was making a that that last 22 of Genesis chapter 8. That seed time and harvest time, cold, eat, winter, whatever it is, as far as head remain, as how we have human beings living in the world, see we not cease. Now we go back to verse 20, verse 21. He's talking about, he said, the heart of men, they are evil. So the leaders you are having, they are giving you those little benefit because of what they want to take from you. The heart of those leaders are evil. The heart of the government are evil. So now you know that these people, they don't mean well for you as a, as a as human person. They don't have any feeling for you. All they are thinking of is itself, yourself, your family and yourself. And pass pain to you and your future generation. So now after you come out from it, there's a plan for you, God's plan for you is in this book on how you can come out from, from, from this. Now, one of the, look at it, you read that verse 22, it said, seek time. That if there is hunger in the land, there must be 
something to go and invest. You feed yourself. If you never sow, you can never invest. So sowing is very important in this time. This time. This is the best time to sow. This time is the time to sow. This time you need to sow so that you can invest big. That was it. As far as the heck you made it. Sit time and harvest time for me sis. Now listen, as a Christian, what is your giving capacity? What do you give? How do you give? Your giving is very important, it's very key for you to excel. If you live your life in giving, you will excel. It doesn't matter how the economy runs, it will be running in your favor. That's how it works. And that's what the Bible is about. It doesn't matter the economy, how the economy runs, what comes up. No matter if dollar went to two million era, no matter how it's coming, because you are a giver. Now, most of us Christians, we have faith part in our side. We we don't practice the principle of Christ. We live the life of Christ, and we fail to practice the principle of Christ. The principle of Christ is what you will use to overcome this world, this world, this world. The principle of Christ is faith. Have faith in God. Practice the thing that God has told you to do. Do it in faith. That is the principle of Christ on earth. The, the, the life of Christ is the only path which is good. So if you want to be a Christian, you do this too. You must have the life of Christ and the principle of Christ. Everybody has this life and has this principle. As a human, this is my life. And I have principle that got my life in this world. So Christ has given us this principle. How we can live. Now, giving is living. Just come to look at it. Eat all the food in the world and refuse to give to the toilet. You will die with all the shaking and everything. So giving is living. You must give. Likewise in our finances. Now is our hard time. It's the best time to sow. This is the best opportunity to become well of this. Don't complain. This is the best time to look for people to help. In your capacity, you can help. Uh, God's word for us. This is not me saying it. God said it. And I believe it. That's what I'm sharing with you. That in your little capacity, you can give. You can give to become excellent in every area of your life. First kingdom, there are what we call shyness of giving. And one of the shyness of giving is kingdom. First kingdom. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 33, Christ was telling us, He seek God's first, His kingdom, and His righteousness. Every other thing that you're dying for, like you're trying to get money to buy food stuff, all these other things, shall be what? Have them come to you. So the first thing is you have God's kingdom in your heart. Given this time, you don't know, allow the devil to the devil plan this time to weigh God's kingdom down. The devil's plan is to destroy God's kingdom. But you are a child of God, you will not give the devil that room. And how do we fight it? It's by taking God's kingdom in our hearts. Seek God's kingdom in our hearts. There are people in God's kingdom who are suffering. There are Christians who are, who are, who are not right about them, who are far better than them. You need to seek how you can see them, how you can help them, how you can take God's kingdom. There are people you need to pray for also. This time you need to do that. That is the only way you can be a giant in your world. The Bible said in Psalm chapter 41, that is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. Now, who is the poor? My simple definition is someone who could not afford something at the time. The poor man. You may be thinking you are very wealthy, and at the time you need money to buy something. That means you are poor. It's, 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 it's not a, because if you could not afford that thing, there's no means of affording it. You are poor, so you can also pour in different areas, not only financially. <clears throat> you can pour intellectually, you don't know what to do. So, the Bible said, Blessed is the man that considers the poor. So, you that is above that person, you come to the rescue of that person. Poor, the person, and the Bible said, The poor will never be seized from our midst. And God said, Blessed is the man. Say, God will remember that man. He said, He said, is the man that considered the poor. The Lord will remember him in the day of trouble. And now, this is a trouble time. People who don't have money, you are buying money. If you are considering the poor, this time God will remember you, you will not lack because you consider the poor first. But the poor is around you. There are people you are far better than. If you say your house is far, please, please, I beg you. If you say your house is so far, please, I beg you. When you drive to your end of your house, Stand behind your heart and look behind you. There are people who are standing behind you. So your heart is not the finest house in the world. So when you think your heart is far, people are living farther than you. So you are better than those people. So you see, I can drag those people further to you. 
So you have obligation as a pastor, as a member of church. You have a way to give. Giving does not only speak to only members. Pastors, you give. You give as a minister. You help people. You save their life. You give them lots of encouragement. This is our time. We need to encourage ourselves in the body of Christ. Now, it said, it said in verse 2, it said the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And the Lord, and he shall be blessed upon the head. And thou will not deliver him into the will of his enemy. That is what I'm talking about. What giving can do. Your enemy will be planning you with all the plans of your enemy to utter you. The Bible says if you give to the poor, God will not deliver you to the hands of the enemy. He will deliver you in times of trouble. That is not prayer. It's not prayer and fasting now. It's giving. Let me tell you, you have enemies. And those enemies have plans for you. If you want to be free from the enemies that you have, either your business, either your marriage, either your academy, either your ministry, you are free from all the enemies you have. Giving. Psalm 41. Giving. Giving will deliver your heart from the plans of your enemy when you give. Now, let's go further to verse 3 of it. You'll see more light come to you. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing, and thou will make all his bed in sickness. Praise God. The Lord will remember you in your bed of languishing. You know I miss to be languishing when things are when you are weary, really, really, when you can't walk. He even said, in sickness, you have strength to make your bed. That means he's telling you that sickness cannot break you down. This is the covenant of God in this end time now. What you can do to yourself. I'm just telling you what I know can help you to pull out of this holocaust of poverty that the government is putting down in this world. You, you do a lot of the government's plan. Every plan of the government against you to filter your wealth, your business and everything. You can give your way out from it and you become successful. He said the Lord will remember in his bed of languishing because of giving to the poor. Listen, listen. It's, it's, it's as big as it is. That's some other, other one. Because you give to the poor, God said, I will remember you in your bed of languishing when everything is downcast. When you are sick, He said He will give you strength to make your bed in that place. So, giving is the one of the most powerful weapons that you can use to eradicate poverty. It doesn't matter how you are. You may, you may think you don't have to give. You have to give. You have to share with people. You have financial share. No matter how poor you are, you can still give in your state. There are people you are better than that. If you go to Okrikistan, where they say Okrika, it has great. They are lower grade of Okrika. They are great, they are great, they are great, grade of clothes. Even if you go to the boutique, they are level of clothes. So no matter the level you are, you are not the last level. You are not the last level. There are people who don't know how to level, they don't know how to So you are your level is not the last level. And you are God's own. When they say the poor will not be seized by our means, you shouldn't be the one, you shouldn't be the poor. You should be the one giving. We must make it. It doesn't matter the economy. It doesn't matter if the, the, the government says we will buy our own money with our money. No problem. It, it, it is settled. God knew this day before we are created. Like I said, He said there will be darkness. There will be cross darkness, the people. Not only darkness. This is just darkness. The worst one, worse than this will come. But listen, get your mind prepared. Start planning your giving life. You will see that you overcome the trouble that will come over you. It's part of living. So don't, don't be panicked as a Christian. Be bold. Be bold. Be bold in this season. Now, I, I want you to know that God knew these things that are happening. He's giving you opportunity to be blessed. God knew this time will come when you will start buying money with your money. This is what we call poverty strains. Yet the way people cannot even feed themselves anymore. Problems will start coming up. There will be a revolution. People will start fighting. They will start killing themselves. Nation will rise against nation. This is God. God knew this day. He had made provision for it for us as believers to succeed. He said in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 13, He said, If a man shut his ear to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. Praise God. This verse is talking about people who shut their ear. Who see the poor and shut their ear against the poor? The Bible said, This other person will cry also. And when he cried, <laughs> nobody will listen to him. You may think you have money, so you will not have you will not be broke again. It's not only money that will make you cry. You will be looking for kids, children, and you'll be crying, and you have money. Nobody will listen to you. 
you will money baby children will not come. Maybe you have been sickness. So many things that will come. You remember we read Psalm 41, where the Bible said, Blessed is the man that considered the poor. He said, even in sickness, the person will have strength to make his bed. Let the shyness of your spirit open up. Let it be open. Look for a way to bless people so that you can be a blessing financially. Don't shut your ear. The poor don't need to cry to you. When they say cry, they see them on the street. People cannot feed. Some old women who cannot buy it. Some old men. You see them. And what they are looking for is your research card. What they, are, what they are looking for to feed is your research card. Please consider the poor. If we do that, we will grow ourselves. We will become mighty as a Christian. I'm telling you how we can be. consider the poor around you. See how you can help people. Or become what they are not, what they wish to be and they could not. See how you can be a China of blessings in your life. And then there will be open doors for you. Different doors can be open for you. This is one key China of, of giving that supersedes all that China God is so interested in. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 19. I will read from verse 17. Then you will see what I'm trying to say. In Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 17, the Bible said, Say, He that had pity upon the poor, learn unto the Lord, and that which he had given will be paid back for him. See? <laughs> this is what God is saying. Listen. God is the only person you can learn to and you have confidence. How do you learn to go? You want to learn to somebody who has everything, who has the silver and gold is his own. You want to learn to that person. And he said thing that you can learn to that person. And you know that that kind of person will never let you down. So your giving is a learning to God. It's an opportunity to learn to God. Just imagine Buhari said you want to borrow money from you. Buhari that has every year in Nigeria. As far as the president, he has every local government, every land belongs to the federal government of Nigeria. Every land, that's why they are giving you C of O, R of O, even if your father that built that place, the land belongs to the government of that place. Imagine Buhari wants to borrow money from you. Imagine uh, Biden from the US wants to borrow money from you. Imagine the king of England and North Carolina wants to borrow money from you. How do you feel? And if borrow as little as one naira from you and say they will give you in seven, you will gladly want to give to you. How much more God who creates all these people? He said, he that considered the poor, he did have pity. He didn't just having pity on the poor. The Bible says that person learned to God. And whatever he has given to that poor, God will pay him back. I imagine God paying him back. And God will not pay, God can pay you back in many ways. It can be when your children is looking for a job somewhere else. Because you have pity on the poor, your children will not be pitied. It can be you care for people, orphanage. You care for them, you will not lack children. It can be people, widows, people, mothers you care for in your old day, your soul. That is your bed of languishing when you hold Psalm 41. In your old days also, God will want to see you through. Because you have pity on the poor. Please, it's important. This time is the best time to be wealthy as a Christian. This is a very good China. I have to tell you the truth. This is the best time to be wealthy as a Christian. See an opportunity to stoop, to learn to God. Lord, you said in your word in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 17 that if I have pity on the poor, I'll learn to you and you'll give me back. So I want to learn. Take a point to learn. Even if it's one error, start looking for people to help in God's kingdom. Do good to everybody, especially those in the household of faith. Means your Christian brothers, your church members. Look for them, see how you can help them. There are clothes that you think you can do with these people's Christmas clothes. The rug that you are carrying on the ground is African. Okay, people go and stay and buy. That shoe that you don't want to wear again is people's party shoes. So don't throw them away. Package them, polish them, refold the clothes. Look for people to give who wear it. Oh, make it, make them look good to themselves. You are no longer in that class. That's why you cannot wear the clothes again. You have above that class. So it's, it's painful when you look at you can't you can't be crying with them. You are crying and my Christian. I can you see what they say? Practice the gift in life of Christ. Christ gives to people. He gives to people. Even the way the, the woman of Sarah who said, Please, my daughter needs your help. And Christ said, The food of his children are not meant for dogs. Christ still gave that woman healing. He still said, When the woman said, If the food that fell off your mouth from the, from the master table, the dogs in the house give the food. And Christ said, Go your faith. You, you know, we, 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 we don't listen to what our spiritual parents are giving for that's why we're having problems. 
If you read Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4, the Bible said, so we should what? Children, obey your parents in the law. It is very important. Then in verse 2 of it, he said, honor your father and your mother so that your days on earth will be long. If you go further, I said a lot of things about that. So you need to honor your parents, also give it to your parents. It's very important. So you will live long. If you plant this China, you will not pray much in financial it is it, 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 commandment that we have said in Genesis now. As far as the head remains, seed time and harvest time is not seed. So why, why, why not so? Everybody is a farmer in his own way. You are a farmer. Sow seed. So if you sow seed of tears, you reap. The Bible says, don't be deceived. It's not mock. Whatsoever a man soweth, that will you reap. So why, why will you sow pain? You will reap pain. Oh, this far gone, this far gone is so joy! <laughs> Hallelujah! So joy to people's life. Let everybody be a light to people. Anybody that comes to you and encounter life, encounter God, encounter something that will change their life forever. And so, wow, it's not for that brother that I met. I don't know what I can do this business with. You know, for that sister that I met. I don't know. Let you be your big China of light to people. The Bible says, you say, as a Christian, say, light your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. If you are not doing these things, you are a prodigal son or you are a prodigal daughter to God. If your light is not shining for me, if you are not helping the people around you, if you are not a blessing to people around you, you are a prodigal son, you are a prodigal daughter to God. I don't care to know how you feel. I'm just telling you how you can come out from this holocaust. Be a China of blessing. You will be so connected, you will be so blessed. The problem of life will not will come, you will, you will, not, you will not feel, you will feel it didn't come. Do you understand? Be making you honorable. When you say honorable, 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 it's not honorable. You are honorable because you honor people. You take them out from, from prosperity. You take them out from God's dungeon. You take them out from poverty. You have makes you honorable. So your giving is very important. People think giving is all about money. It's not only money. Some people don't need your money. What they need is encouragement. Some people don't have money. They don't know what to do. That's why the Bible said in the Bible, said, you say you will, your life is shining in that place. So you are a child. Be a good man. How do you be a good man? The Bible said in Psalm 1, 1, verse 2 and verse 6, He said, a good man showeth a good. You show favor as a good man. That makes you a good man. A good man shows favor. That's what a good man is. After that, a good man shows favor. So you need to be a good man. This is a commandment. Blessed is the man that walketh in the commandment of the Lord. Please, this is the best thing to make it as a Christian. As a Christian youth, we can make it as a youth. You can. You can. Study God's word. Study God's commandment. This season is the best thing to make it. They like me, they say they won't say dollar for a naira, one naira to one naira. We go buy our own see. <laughs> we will have abundance to buy it because we want to use it for God's kingdom. Every money that you have in your hand is for God's kingdom. See God first with what you have. Every other thing you are looking for, all your dreams are being added to you because you see God first. See God is very powerful, it's very key. Please, let's drive in that motive. Let's walk in that direction. Let's put God mind. Consider the poor around you. There are friends around you that you are far better than. Talk to them. Tell them about Jesus. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Talk to people about Jesus. Take God's kingdom. Just say, give them the life. Give them the message of Christ. Tell them, no, my brother, you know you can make it in this world. You can make it in Jesus. Jesus loves you. Just tell them about Jesus. That is all you need to do. Then help them. Take them to church where they can pray, where they can be baptized and get God and have God in their heart. Then you will see light burst out for you. You will make it as you make it. You will make it. You know, it doesn't matter what you are doing. It doesn't matter. You, you may be selling pure water as a lower business. Start giving that your pure water business. Start giving. Pay your tithe and give to the blessed people. In fact, giving to the poor is just compassive with a lot of benefits. It's, it's with a lot of benefits. Pay your tithe. God said He will come down and will do the deliverer for you. We'll pour our more blessings. But let me tell you. Giving to the poor, you look at what they said in Psalm 41. Ah, look at what they said. Say, he that consider the poor in his heart, lend to God. And whatever he has given to the poor, God will give to himself. Look at what he said again in Psalm 41. Let this man that consider the poor. He said, even in his dead of language, 
Not only your seed, your seed. The seed, that's your children. Because you are a giver. The way to avoid poverty is in giving. How do you avoid poverty? Be a giver. And be a giver to me, you avoid poverty. God bless you.